Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shaw, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252 252- 582-5028. That's right. And if today's your first time ever joining us on the Clearview Today Show, we want to welcome you, let you know who's talking to you today. Dr. Abaddon Shah is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. You can find all of his work on his website. That's abaddonshah.com. That's right. And Dr. Shah, today we're going to talk about a very special person uh, to Christian broadcasting, to, to Christianity in general. Mm-hmm. Um you know, many of you may be, may be familiar, uh, last week, um, Dr. Charles Stanley passed away mm-hmm. That's right. um, at, n- at 90 years old. He was 90? That's right. 90 years of age. Wow. That's, yeah. uh, and, and what a, what a legacy, what an unbelievable impact he's had on, on the world. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, many people may not realize that we we live in Vance County, right? North Carolina. Mm-hmm. So right on the edge of, uh, North Carolina and Virginia, mm-hmm. but if you go to the northwest, okay, of here, uh, you will go towards Danville, Virginia. Mm-hmm. That's where he's from. He was from. I remember us talking about that, and yeah. I didn't realize that he was that close. quite as near yeah. as he yeah. as he was. Yeah, he was a Southern Virginia guy. You wow. know, um, you know, he was born in a place called Dry Fork, Virginia, which is like an unincorporated place, mm-hmm. but that's to the north of Danville. Mm-hmm. And um, so he is, in a sense, local. I mean, it takes what two hours to get to Danville. If that, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah, you can get there an hour and a half on a good day. Yeah. yeah. So Dan River is over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife and I took a trip to Danville. Uh, in January of 2022, if I'm not wrong, or 21, maybe 21, mm. and we went over there and and we went to the Y there just to see it is beautiful sits on the Dan River. But that's where he's from. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. If he if yeah. he was 90 when he died, that means he was born in like the 30s or something. Yeah, he was born in 1930. So I mean, he, he I mean that right in the middle of the like Great Depression, like all the stuff is going on. Yeah, 1932. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. September 25th. That's crazy. You so, think about like people born during that time period and what they must have had to go through, and like the the lives that they grew up living must yeah. have shaped them into the people they are. Yeah, yeah. you know, we just did that whole series on the generations, talking yeah. about how the circumstances you're born in kind of shape you into that person. But I mean, mm-hmm. even then, someone born into the depression, growing up to have the legacy that Charles Stanley had, right? And uh, and even his his own father, Charlie, you know, died when, um, you know, just nine months later. After he was born, yeah, yeah, mm. wow. So, so I mean, he grew up not knowing his father. Yeah, wow. And his father died at twenty nine years of age. Wow. Yeah, it's impressive though that he. I mean, that he was still able to do that by God's grace. You know, rise to the position that he did and impact the world Christianity for yeah. right. the way that. And he I, did. that's his mother taking the taking the reins and just kind of teaching him and training him, right? In in what he needs to do, what he needs to believe as far as Christianity goes. His. Grandfather as well made mm. a big impact on his life. Wow. And if I'm not wrong, they were Pentecostal preachers, mm-hmm. and so he had that upbringing. But later in life, uh, he you know he he chose the Baptist doctrine and theology, Southern Baptist mm-hmm. to be more accurate, and uh, that's where he felt home at home. So he he grows up essentially in in and around the church in, in with these with these people who kind of have this this legacy like you said Pentecostal preachers who faith is infused into what they do. When when does he kind of discern like this isn't just the world that I'm growing up in this may be what God has for me that maybe this is a calling on my life. Very early on they say about 14 years of age uh, he wow. felt like he was being called in ministry, and and you know he begins preaching the gospel, and this is like 1956 we're talking about. Um, so, quite early wow. for him to uh, yeah hit the ground running in, in in ministry, and uh, so he he went to the University of Richmond where he got his bachelor's, uh, went on to get his bachelor of divinity from Southwestern. This is in. Uh, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth, Dallas, Dallas, Texas. And then he got his master's and doctorate degrees from uh, Luther Rice Seminary. Mm -hmm. And so that's where he, um, he's, he's, he did his education. Uh, For a time, he did uh, pastor Fruitland Baptist or Bible Church, Baptist Church, uh, where he also taught. 
So really? where, where you guys go for? Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's where we go for our our mission trip with our students. Yeah. Over the summer, Fruitland you, Baptist Bible. College. How did you get? How did you get? How did y'all get involved there at Fruitland? Dr. Shaw. I mean, Dr. Shaw's connection. I, I came to him and I said, "Hey, we're looking for a mission trip opportunity, something that we can kind of set the pace and and control our own." content and programming. He said, well, I've got a contact who their group takes a, a trip to Fruitland Baptist Bible College mm-hmm. up in Hendersonville. Um, so let me get you connected with him. And then from there, we're going back. This is the third summer in a row that we've gone to Fruitland. Wow. This summer that we're taking a group of students. And Charles Stanley I did not know there. that connection with Charles Stanley. Yeah. Wow. That's very cool. That Small world. Really cool. <laughs> yeah. So that's where he started pastoring? That's uh, no. Well, he started doing that earlier on. He, he pastored other places, um, but like in Danville, mm-hmm. but here, you know, he, he be- even began to teach homiletics, you know, preaching, teaching, those kind of things. And then, of course, you know, his his big ministry happened at First Baptist Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been there. Um, uh, when I was in college, um, I was a broadcast journalism major, and so In Touch Ministries was worldwide. I mean, uh, it was mm-hmm. a big deal in the in the 90s. I mean, in, in the 2000s as well. Mm-hmm. But in the 90s, it was a big deal, and it was awesome to, for me to realize, man, this is just like, what, 30 minutes north of where we are? Mm-hmm. I mean, south of where we are? So like, oh, I want to go there. So we had taken a field trip, and we went to the InTouch Ministries uh, headquarters. Um, Dr. Stanley was there in his office, but we didn't get a chance to sit and talk to him or anything. Mm-hmm. But he had to leave. He, something was going on. But we were able to tour his facility wow. and look at all um, how, you know, the filming happened, the recording happened, the editing happened, all those kind of things. We were able to walk in and out and then spend some time in his office looking around. Uh, you know, of course, not by ourselves. There yeah. were, you know, people guiding us, kind of like showing us how he does things. What was that like for you majoring in broadcast journalism and then going going to somewhere like InTouch and being able to tour and, and see kind of behind the scenes? It was a big deal for me. I mean, this is like 1993, I would say. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, if I'm not wrong, 1993 when I went to InTouch Atlanta. And, and it was <laughs> just blown away. Now, to back up a little bit, we used to go to First Baptist Atlanta every Saturday night Mm -hmm. for our uh, Atlanta street ministry. Mm -hmm. So our college was connected to First Baptist Atlanta and those who sign up, and I signed up not because I was that burdened for the street ministries because you get to go to Atlanta Mm -hmm. and you don't have to, um, you know, you don't have any money in your pocket (laughs) to get to go (laughs) see Atlanta. (laughs) Yeah, you walk around talking to people about Jesus, handing out tracts. Nah, I can do that. Not that I didn't care about the gospel, but you know, at at like, hey, eighteen if, years if you go of age, to y, Atlanta at eighteen yeah. years, why yeah, not? Yeah, why not? Someone's taking me there. Yeah, and on the way back, we would stop at Varsity, uh, Atlanta. You know, get the hot dogs. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you having? What do you have? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, that was good. So we would go to First Baptist, not like in Charles Stanley's office or anything. We would go to a, <laughs> <laughs> those little. Uh, He's like, that would hey, be kind of cool. Yeah, he just kind of pats the seat. He's like, come here. Uh, come on in. What would you like to talk about? Hot dogs. <laughs> it was funny because, you know, prior to starting Clearview today, I didn't know that he was as big into broadcast as as he was. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a it was a huge part of what he did and what In Touch Ministries did. Before the, I knew he was, you know, just through talking to you, Dr. Shaw, that he was the senior pastor of First Baptist in Atlanta. But I didn't know about all of the In Touch Ministries. I didn't know about all the broadcasts and the radio syndications that he was part of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, you know, he he had a a tremendous um a gift mm-hmm. in teaching. Mm-hmm. And getting down to a level where people can under, understand and apply, and it was just just phenomenal. So, you know, when I entered the ministry, when I submitted to the call to go in the ministry, this was in 1995. I was working at a a um, uh, plant up in northeast Georgia where they made switches for cars, like electrical switches. Mm-hmm. And so, drive time was about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. And I would listen to Charles Stanley. I would listen to several other preachers. Uh, but I love Charles Stanley. Mm-hmm. And in fact, um, a year earlier, 1994, I got to meet him in person. Really? Yeah, this was at NRB, which is a National Religious Broadcasters Convention. And in Washington, D.C., um, I was able to meet him, got a book signed by him, oh, one of his wow. devotional books. And it was it was pretty 
pretty cool. Wow. And then, you know, a year later, I submit to the call in ministry and I'm like, wow, I have the guy's book. Now I'm listening to him on the radio. <laughs> so it was a big deal for me. That's pretty cool. To, to, to um, listen to him every morning uh, and sometimes even in the afternoons on the way back. Mm-hmm. Was he was he radio specific or did he do television as well? Television as well, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. He he did, he did both, but mm-hmm. for me it was more it was wa- listening to radio. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was um, you know, phenomenal teacher uh, and statesman. But there there was you know I'm sure many of y'all heard about some trouble in his marriage. Mm-hmm. You know this happened and back in the early nineties and then. In the mid '90s, like '96, '97, it just really blew up, mm. where his wife demanded a divorce, mm. and you know, so everybody jumped on his wife, and it was like, "How terrible of a person you are! How would you do that to her?" And, and again, no man is perfect, right? <laughs> Nobody is where they need to be, and of course, Charles Stanley, as gifted as he was, and as used by God as he was, and as impactful as he was on my life, he wasn't perfect, mm-hmm. and not that he did anything like go outside his marriage or anything like that, or, you know, cheat on his wife or anything. None of that. He was good in that Mm -hmm. way. He just didn't put that priority that was needed towards his wife and family because he was so driven. He was so focused on ministry. Uh, He was involved in Amway and things like that as well. So he was so focused on these things, and it definitely impacted his marriage. Mm. And so when his wife demanded that divorce, it was very painful. It was shocking to me. I'm like, that's my hero. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're terrible, terrible person. But then you later on, you hear and you go, oh, well, I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. How can that be? Because yeah. this man taught me so much. Yeah. And yet he, he was not making his own wife the priority. Right. And, you know, some people have said, well, she had issues and this and that. And that could have been the case. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. But I just feel like the priority should have been, of course, God, mm-hmm. but then definitely his wife mm-hmm. and and then ministry. But I think at times he crossed the line. It was ministry and success and even, you know, through Amway, finances and all that became far more important. And that's mm-hmm. that's sad. Yeah. That shouldn't have I, happened. I think, yeah, and I think that's an all too common trap that especially men fall into is that when you start to taste success, it's never, you know, it's, it's very rarely enough. Yeah. You know, I look back yeah. on the things that we've done and I'm like, man... I, I see the drive to do more, but I mean, working under you, Doctor Show, there's always that understanding of, hey, don't forget to don't don't neglect God, don't neglect your family, don't neglect yeah. these things that God has given you, because the success as we're tasting it ultimately is temporary. We know yeah. that we're working towards ultimate success, which is you know unification with Christ. Right. But at the same time, these things that we're doing, um, like kind of like you said, if left unchecked. Can, it's, I mean, just like we talked about in our Malachi episodes, these blessings that mm-hmm. God's given us, if we don't treat them right and we don't put them in their proper place, can turn into, they, they can rot. They well, can I them. would suggest, you know, do whatever you can to take your family along with you in ministry. That's right. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's going to uh, eliminate every problem there is. No, of course not. There will be times that you won't live up to the person you need to be, mm-hmm. but um, take them along. Make them part of the vision. I don't think he did that quite. Mm-hmm. And so his own son, Andy, you know, kind of turned against his dad back in the same time period. And it was, for me, it was tragic to watch this family falling apart yeah. and it becoming national news. In fact, international news that son is demanding the resignation of his father. Mm. And he's working under his dad. They took the divorce that seriously? They they were demanding that he resign? Um, Not necessarily about the divorce part as much as about my dad is not the man he is supposed to be. Really? Yeah. Wow. So I I think Andy should have handled it differently, in Mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think it should have been like, hey, I'm going to resign. And then you and me, as father and son, we need to talk. Instead of in the church, rising up, dividing the church. Yeah. We're sharing all this because sometimes we put people on a pedestal. We mm-hmm. put them at a place that only belongs to God. That's yeah. right. There is no perfect person. So we need to see the realities and go, ah, note to self. Don't make that mistake. Isn't it funny how people get uncomfortable about stuff like that? Like yeah. we have no problem 
pointing out King David's flaws. We have yeah. no point, problem pointing out Moses' flaws. And these are men that God has specifically set yeah. aside and shown their flaws. But people who are still alive today were like, eh, he, he just yeah. better not say nothing yeah. you know, about him. Yeah. Not that we're trashing him, but I'm just saying there's, there's, w- that's what makes us human. Right. I would have said, you know, hey, you need to resign. You're working under your dad. so And he's the head in charge there. You need to resign. And then mm-hmm. handle it man to man instead of saying, hey, take him out. And I will, I will be the next one to help mm. get this church back on the right track. I'm not saying he said that. I yeah. don't think Andy said that, but it was sort of headed in that direction. And it was like, oh, yeah, that doesn't does not need to happen. That's right. You know. So I say all that to say, every family has their problems. Every family has struggles, and uh, we need to offer grace. We need to pray for each other mm-hmm. and and avoid that now today uh, just to clarify um today of course charles stanley is, is has passed away into glory he's in the presence of god but a few years after a few years after that incident uh, father and son did didn't make it right mm-hmm. and uh it was it was beautiful that that happened mm-hmm. of course uh, andy went on to start uh, North Point Church North Point, mm-hmm. in in Atlanta, very successful church, mm-hmm. doing great, um, and of course um, Charles Stanley continued doing what he was doing, right up until about three four years ago, mm-hmm. he was still pastoring, still preaching, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he would sit down and preach, and um, uh, you know Mitt did a lot of wonderful things. Uh, he was also a two term president of the Southern Baptist Convention, nineteen eighty four through nineteen eighty six. At a very critical point, you know, with the conservative resurgence, um, he stood firm on the truth mm-hmm. of God's word, which was, you know, which was the main issue. Right. Yeah. And so people who respected him kind of looked to him mm-hmm. for um, direction and and uh, guidance as to how and where to go in the midst of this crazy time period. Mm-hmm. And Stanley did that. So well done, yeah. good and faithful servant. That's yeah, right, absolutely. That's I right. I love the the way you brought that out. That you know, while he had all these accolades and while he is known for so much and, mm-hmm. and such a tremendous impact, continues to have an impact. Yeah, um, he wasn't he wasn't a perfect person. Yeah, and it's good it's good to say that it's not only acceptable but it's good yeah. because a lot of times I will look at my own life and my own family issues and I go, man, why can't I get it together? Mm. Why can't I be like these heroes that I that I end up idolizing? You know, mm. these heroes of ministry and these these men who seem to, they have it all together and God is just blessing them. It's like, I hate to keep talent, tying it back to Malachi, but just because it's still fresh mm. on my mind, like, yeah. like these people that God is just blessing and he's not blessing me. Well, think about, you know. Do you want to exchange yeah. places with think them? Think about what <laughs> right. they actually have to go through. Is mm, it, is it yeah. worth it? There's a me? lot that happens that we don't know about. We just see the polished exterior that looks just like yeah. success 24-7. And we can sit here and pretend yeah. that it didn't happen and that everything actually was picture perfect, yeah. but that's not the story that God wrote. Right? You know, it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of primitive to say that because I heard it from somebody who, <laughs> I don't trust him on every theology or uh, doctrinal statement, but he said, in a, another level, another devil. Hmm. If you want to go to another level, you have a whole different kind of attack coming. Mm. That's right. Do you want that? That's right. <laughs> a lot of people want that big stage, big li- li- limelight and all the success. Well, you're going to have a whole different set of attacks coming at you. That's right. Do you want that? Uh, no. No, everybody wants to go to heaven, <laughs> uh, but nobody wants no. to die. <laughs> no. So, yeah. you know, so when you see people on the big stage with doing great things, big things, don't ever be envious. Don't ever let the enemy bring that feeling of why not me? Mm-hmm. Because you don't know what they're going through, or you don't know their weaknesses and their failures. That's right. That's right. And, you know, just be humble and be grateful to the Lord for even allowing you to be used. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's a privilege to be in ministry to begin with. Just to be allowed to do this over any other job in the world is a privilege. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I appreciate so much, Dr. Shah, not only you you giving us this opportunity, but you continuing to guide us and shape us, not just as as people who work in a church, but as as men, as husbands, as fathers, to to coach us in those things like, hey, bring your family along with you. Mm-hmm. Make sure you invest in your family as well. I, I, I appreciate that more than I can say. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate that. And you guys are my heroes. Well, You're doing that. You're doing it. Well, you've set a good example. And That's right. It's, you know, we've we've formed a family here, and this 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 family bond that we have on the Clearview Today Show and at Clearview Church, I mean, is going strong. And I think it's testament to what God is doing in this little corner of of North Carolina. He's already shown He can bring mm-hmm. greatness out of these small Amen. towns. Amen. Yeah. That's right. 
If you guys enjoyed today's episode or you have questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. Or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com and you can partner with us financially on that same website. We're grateful to all of our giving partners and we count you as our Clearview family, our Clearview Today family, as we stand shoulder to shoulder and impact the nations with the gospel of Jesus. I have a uh, a Charles Stanley quote. Oh wow! To close on, if wow. I mean, there's so many to choose from. Yeah. Uh, but I have one here that kind of jumped out at me. If it's okay with you guys, yeah, yes, please. Uh, he says, "We are either in the process of resisting God's truth, or in the process of being shaped and molded by His truth." Mm. Wow. So true. One of two realities: so you're true. either resisting God's truth, or you're being shaped and molded mm. by His truth. Wow. And that's wow. that's our whole goal here on Clear Free Today is that you would be shaped and molded by God's truth. Beautiful. Wow. We love you guys. We'll see you next time on Clear Free Today. Thank mm-hmm. you.